All right. Well, it is three o'clock, and so I do want to get started. Um, I am Shelley Reed. I'm the manager of Legal Services National Technology Assistance Project. We call it LSNTAP for short because it's a lot easier to say. And we're here today to learn a little bit about Legal Server, have a chance for the community to share with us the things that they want to know, to share with each other how you're using Legal Server. Caitlin McTiernan of Just Tech is here to give us a kind of a brief overview of the clinics module because there was a lot of questions about that going on the on the listserv. So we're going to let Caitlin kick us off and then we'll open it up to an open forum and allow you the audience to steer the conversation. So take it up take over Caitlin. Thanks Shelly. Hi everyone. Welcome. Nice to meet a lot of you and to see a few familiar names in the group. Um, so like Shelly said, uh, I'm a Kate McTernan consultant with Just Tech. Um, I work on a lot of legal server onboardings and refinement projects and online intakes and all kinds of things. Um, and certainly I've helped some groups set up their clinics module. So um, yeah, we just wanted to make sure everyone Joining this call had sort of a baseline understanding of the clinics module, especially in light of the conversation that was happening in the listserv. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen just like has like a demo environment. So we'll walk through the clinics there. Um, just want to stress that this is going to be a very like basic walkthrough of like the core functionality. Um, I'm excited to turn it back over to you all as soon as I'm done and we could hear more about how you all are using or considering using this um this module and any kind of the other like add-on functions of clinics. So um, without any further ado, I will share my screen. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. Feel free to unmute or to put a question in chat if you have questions, if you have any questions or feedback. Um, yeah, trying to, well, pretty an informal <laughs> conversation. I want to make sure everyone uh, has a chance to speak who wants to. So um, I share my screen straight onto the clinics tab. Um, and we start with, um, kind of the set of list views that indicates upcoming clinic events, um, clinics, the clinics that you are assigned to. So similar to how your homepage might have my assignments showing the cases you're assigned to, this tab shows you the clinics that you've been assigned to and then, um, appointments. And we're going to talk about like the different levels to all of this, because clinics mean something different than clinic events and clinic appointments. Um, so if you are brand new, you just got this module enabled on your site, um, or you're just testing it out for the first time, um, you would be, you'll start with, uh, the clinic level. So You're going to try, you're going to go in and create a clinic. You can think of that as like the location that this event is happening, or if you have like an ongoing series of a clinic, like if there's a standing naturalization clinic, that's what um, this event is. And then once you have the clinic built out, you can go in and specify which specific days that clinic is happening. And those are called clinic events. So it's kind of two different levels of records. There's the overarching clinic. And then within that, there are the days that the clinic is happening and those are reflected as the clinic events. So to see it in practice, I'll just go in and in the actions menu, um, there's an option to add a new clinic. Uh, I wanna stress that this is like dynamic. Um, so you can change the order, you can add fields to this section. Um, so the display that we have on our Just Tech site isn't necessarily the one that you have to have or do have on yours. Um, you can change this around. You can add instructions and put labels in. Um, so it just depends on like the kind of data you're collecting about your clinics and that you need to track. You can customize this as you can with a lot of other pieces of legal server. Um, I'm going to go in and we'll just call this, um, say, uh, bankruptcy clinic, if I could spell. Um, uh, I have the ability to specify the location um, and I can do the full address, I could do like the name of the building that it's happening in. Um, uh, I can put in a website if there's one like being used to advertise or sign up for this clinic. Um, and then uh, any kind of like email address for like contacting folks about this. There'll be another section in a minute where we can add more detailed contact data. Um, a description and some notes about the clinic. General subjects, uh, that provides you with an opportunity to categorize. Um, this kind of event. So 
there are some options that we see here, but this is fully flexible for you to say, you know, we, these are the types of clinics we have, and this is how we want to categorize them. And for anybody working with like pro bono users in your system, um, you might recognize this generic subjects field because you can also indicate for pro bono users, or I should say for all users, like what subjects they um, can be involved in, subjects as your organization defines them, not necessarily like these three options that you see here. Um, you can also specify the problem codes that are being addressed through this clinic, um, the counties that are involved, if this is tied to a particular office or program within your org organization. And then lastly, this one's a pretty important one, you can specify uh, the intake process that can be used with this clinic. Um, so if you, let's say like get, we create the clinic, we'll create the clinic event, and then we have our different time slots that are available for folks to come and join. Um, they There's an ability to like to start an intake process right from that time slot. We'll see that in action in like a couple of seconds. But um, the intake process that launches is set here. It's great because if you want to have a custom intake process for this for a particular clinic, you can build that out and then tie this in here. So it doesn't have to necessarily be the intake process or intake processes that staff use on like a more general basis or that they see on their homepage on that sidebar. You can build out your own intake process just for this clinic with the kinds of like specific data collection you need for, for this event. Um, I'm gonna, we've got a whole bunch of <laughs> test uh, intakes here. I'm just gonna pick our, um, our begin applicant intake because that's what I want to launch when I go in and try to start an intake for someone who's attending the, cl uh, the clinic. We press continue. Um, and we land on the clinic profile and you guessed it, it is also dynamic. You can change this around. So um, we've like listed out a whole bunch of fields in one long list. Um, we might want to throw in some headers eventually, <laughs> uh, but you can change how this display is listed out. Um, you can yeah control what, what shows up here. There's also, once you create the clinic, an opportunity to store like more data about that particular um, happening. So, through the actions menu, we can specify site contacts and you can put their name and their email address. And this is what I was referencing when I said there's more opportunities to like record contact information here. So if you have like a particular, um, if your organization is conducting the clinic with another group and they have, you know, three contacts that you should reach out to about this, um, you can record them here. And then it's a helpful reference point for anybody accessing um, information about this clinic. I'll I'm just going to be a little boring with my name. We'll call it site host one. Um, and I press continue. If I wanted to add more, I could have gone in and pressed this green icon and to create more rows and to record more contacts. But once I save this, um, that contact will then show up in this list view here. So any contacts I add, I can see directly from the clinic profile, which is quite helpful. Um, you can also, I'm going to skip around a little bit, uh, you can upload documents, you can upload tasks um, to uh, clinics. So there's some additional capabilities in terms of storing data about the clinic. Um, and then you can also uh, assign users to clinics. And then that's like the first step to be able to ultimately assign users to specific like appointment slots and clinic events. Um, so I'm going to just demonstrate how you would go about adding somebody to a clinic first so that we're set up when we get to the clinic event piece. Um, so I'm going to pop on over to our users tab. That's you have to go over to users to be able to uh, select somebody and add them as a clinic user. So we'll just go with me for right now. I want to add myself to this particular clinic. So I'm going to go to my user account here. And then um, for us, it's under edit extra information. Um, we're able to access this clinic's uh, um, multi-select field. And that's where you indicate which clinics this particular user is involved in. Um, some folks might have this on a different page. Some folks might not have this enabled yet. It's like a system field that's accessible and you can add it to any of these user processes, um, but it'll vary by organization, like where it lives um, or if it has been placed on a, a form yet. So. Um, for any admins on the call, you might have to like look for it and enable it if you're trying to um, to roll this part of clinics out. 
I'm going to go now. I was already listed under the immigration clinic. I'm going to hold down control and assign myself to the bankruptcy clinic as well. And then when I press continue and go back to this clinic that I created, um, I now show up as a clinic user. And you can go in and do this for um, any other user accounts, as many users as are going to be involved in this clinic in any of the like events within this umbrella of a clinic. Um, and then now we get to the part that I'm like talking a lot about, which is the actual clinic event itself. So um, if I am doing this bankruptcy clinic, let's say uh, tomorrow, and I want to be able to sign folks up and have our different appointments. Um, uh, I need to go to the clinic and then in the actions menu, um, I can select add clinic event. And that's creating a like a, a record of this clinic on a particular day. Um, there's some overlapping fields here uh, from what we saw when we were creating the clinic. So again, I can specify the subjects and the problem codes and the zip codes and counties that are involved with this clinic event. This one's also dynamic, so you can change the order, you can change the fields and the labels here. Um, you can specify an emergency contact for this event. And then uh, critically, right, you have to designate the day and the time. So we'll pick tomorrow. I'm gonna make this some easy math for myself and we'll just say that it runs from nine to 12 p.m. Um, but you can obviously put whatever, whatever the range is for that, that event. When we press continue, um, we can designate if there are any um, volunteer position types that need to be filled with this. Um, it actually, I'll leave this in. Um, we don't have a lookup running from this, but you can say if there's particular um, types of volunteers that you need for this, and then there's a means to track um, whether you've like located them for that clinic event. I'm gonna skip past that for a second just to get to the time slots. And that's where I get to designate like how many time slots are happening. Legal Server has a really great function here where it'll calculate it for you. Um, so if I say that there's like, each of my time slots should be one hour and the clinic event is three hours long. So I'm gonna say there's three time slots. And then maybe um, I know that there's gonna be two time slots, like two slots available for each of those times. So I'll put two in here and then press calculate and it will automatically do that calculation. So you don't have to manually figure out like the start and the stop times and put that all in. Um, of course, if you have kind of times that don't break out this easily, like if you have a half hour and then a 45 minute call and then a 20 minute slot, right? You might have to go in and kind of edit it from this point, uh, but it can at least give you a starting basis of generating these um, different times, certain end times here. Um, if I needed to change something, like let's say I actually only wanted to have five time slots, not six, uh, I can press this minus icon and it'll take that what that row away. I can also press this plus icon to like bring it back and update that accordingly. Um, I'm gonna press continue one more time. Um, and on this last step of the clinic event create process, I get to say whether it's a reoccurring event or not. So if I was doing this bankruptcy clinic on a weekly basis, you know, I can, or actually there's a lot of different options, right? I could say annually, monthly, every two weeks, daily. I can specify the reoccurrence cycle and then indicate when that should end. Um, and that can save you some time for having to generate each of these clinic events individually. You can just kind of in one go generate this whole bunch. I'm going to switch this over to now. We'll keep it as a one day clinic for this example, clinic event. Um, and when I press continue, I now land on the clinic event profile. So this is representing that clinic, but for this particular day um, and set of times. Um, the Actually, it's a great question. This like goes, <laughs> segues very nicely. So Samantha asked in the chat, what's the benefit of using clinic module compared to an event and outreach? I'd say one of the biggest draws is what we're looking at right here, which is the uh, scheduling function. Um, so you get these time slots and you can assign uh, like specific cases to each of those time slots. You can assign users to those time slots. So it provides like a bit more of like a scheduling management than you have built out or but, like is in the outreach module. Um, the, we see this ad client here. So if I was actually like day of on the clinic, it was a walk-in and somebody came 
came in at 9 a.m. and I was talking to them and I wanted to do that intake, I can press add client and it's going to generate an intake process. It's going to link me to whatever intake process I picked for this clinic. Um, uh, I can also, so um, we see that the users is blank here. That's because I haven't designated which of my clinic users will be working for this particular clinic event. So that's one extra step I need to take here. I go into actions and then assign user to clinic event. And because I assigned myself to the clinic, I show up as a person who could be added to this event. So you have to make sure that you're adding folks to the clinic first before you can add them to the specific like day clinic event. I'll pick myself, we'll press assign. Um, and then now I show up as a user um, and I can then go in and assign users to specific times and I could put myself right for some of these times. I can say I am working the nine and the 10 a.m. shifts. And then I show up here as like an assignment. Um, so it can really help for just kind of managing who is gonna be working these different times. And also um, to the extent that you are doing like intakes or any like screening beforehand, it can uh, you can link existing cases to these time slots. So then somebody who's assigned to a time slot can see who they'll be like talking to at that time. Um, we've got users down below and then uh, emergency contacts if I had added one would show up here. If I didn't, not when I was creating the event, I can still go back up here um, and record additional emergency contacts uh, to, to have this be up to date. Um, that was a lot of information really fast. There's one last thing I do want to I want to touch on, um, which is scheduling into a time slot. Um, so like I just demonstrated, you can press add client and create an intake and that will hold down that um, time slot. You can also do this for cases. So if we um, pop into an existing case uh, in the actions menu, you can enable the option if it doesn't if it's not enabled already to schedule a clinic event. And it'll filter automatically to show like upcoming clinic events within um, the next month for the county and the problem code of your case. And you can clear these filters out as needed. Um, so now I can, I found my bankruptcy clinic here and I can press schedule and pick an available time slot. Uh, and then it'll be, we'll store that. And when we press refresh here, it's now linking that case to this particular time slot. So I can come to this clinic event and, and access the case that way. There's also a list view you can put on your case profile to show like what clinic events that case is associated with. So whether you're accessing this from the clinic event or the case, you can see that they're like connected together. Um, and then lastly, you can also uh, sign up from, let me make sure I get the right one. Yeah, from the intake process. So the disposition block has uh, an option to accept and schedule clinic and also to set pending and schedule clinic. So at the end of the intake, if you like, if it's within your workflow to do the full intake and then assign somebody to a clinic time slot, this gives you that option. So I can pick accept and schedule, continue. Um, and then I same concept as before, right? I have to clear some filters out to see what I'm looking for. But now I have bankruptcy, I can press schedule and I can pick another time slot and link that together. Um, and then, yeah, I'm back on the case. If we go back to the clinic event, it's now showing me that that second case that I just linked in here. So it's reserving those those time slots. Um, one very last piece, and then I know we have some questions in the chat. I'll go back to you. Um, you can um, also track like attendance and sign in. So there's a sign in sheet that you'll see in the actions menu. Um, to the extent that you're like assigning existing cases or intakes to this clinic event, it'll show those folks' names they can sign in. And if I had like recorded the legal problem, we would have seen that as well. Um, but this is, this like generates for you automatically a sign-in sheet. There is also um, a mass update status. So after the clinic event, right, or during it, you can go in and say, oh, these two people were um, they canceled or they were no-showed or they confirmed or walked in. This just helps you track the status of um, the folks who will be attending the clinic. Um, and then if you go in to edit information, you also, for that particular time slot, 
can manually edit that the status there for that one record and also record general and problem notes um, about the, the individual and their connection with that clinic time slot. Um, I will pause there. That kind of walks us through very fast <laughs> the main pieces to, to clinics. And then I will, <laughs> I'm going to go back up and see uh, <laughs> if we can get- So Tim some provided that. some really helpful information about- um what legal server can do now. And then Samantha had another question about what's the benefit to using the clinic module compared to setting a cl client appointment slot in the calendar? Um, yeah, it gives you like kind of a, an aggregated view of all the people that you'll be talking to, right, for like one particular event. So you can see that information all grouped together. And then um, it can also be a way to manage assignments a bit more easily. So you can see like, who at your who which users have been designated um to particular time slots uh which time slots need to be assigned which ones are still open what time slots are available to indicate that you have like capacity to accept more folks or to accept walk-ins so it gives you like a bit more of like a tracking ability in addition to the status tracking that we just saw there with like canceled and no showed um and also like the the sign in sheet if that's if that's helpful so then we had another question about users that you've assigned to it. How will users be notified of the event? Is there some automatic um, way you can notify users? That's actually a great question. Um, I believe there's at least a list you can show that they've been assigned to. Um, I don't think that when you assign, like when I assigned myself here, I did not get an email automatically. I'm not aware of a way that you can do that, but we've got plenty of experts on the call too. So if I'm, if I'm wrong there, <laughs> feel free to chime in. <laughs> All right. And here's one for, is there a fun functionality for private pro bono attorneys to sign up for slots in the clinic, like a day long clinic with one hour slots for clients, or would we manage that external to legal server and add the pro bono attorneys manually? So I guess, it, I think they're asking if there's like a portal for pro bono attorneys to sign up. There is a way that you can tie this all in with pro bono, like opportunity tracking. And if you did have um, pro bono users who were logging into your system, you could have them sign up um, and like indicate their interest in participating in this. You can also that same kind of user assignment function you can do for pro bono users. So like it would still be like somebody probably internally would be um like internal to your staff would be managing it, but you can assign the pro bono person to this clinic event and then assign them to time slots. Um, you can also track uh, like pro bono, um, what is it called? Uh, like whether there are obligations for certain users, for certain volunteers to participate in clinic events um, and then track if they've done that by assigning them to users. So there's definitely a lot of options for connecting pro bono users into clinics. Um, I'm not sure if there's a front facing one, how it might tie into simple justice, which is legal servers platform with pro bono, um, like a, another means for pro bono volunteers to access and update information that ties back into the main legal server site. Um, so I follow up with you on that one, <laughs> Jane. So then we have another question. If you so assign someone to to the clinic, does it reflect on that person's calendar as well? <laughs> um, yeah, it does. So it just appear. I was like, let's right. just get then... in one go. Sure. And also I do want to say if anybody has any experiences with that relate to any of these questions, like feel free to please jump in. Uh, we want this to be as conversational as possible. So um, if you've had a different experience or you've had like some workarounds with any of the questions um, that you've, that have worked for your organization, please like unmute or put in chat and we'll, we'll share. So we have two more sets of questions and then I think we'll um, kind of move away from the clinic module and have it just be open to um, whatever discussion the audience wants. But Ariana is asking, will the general notes for clients show on the main clinic page? And then along with that, so you can see all the notes for each clients on one page so that you can keep track of things post-clinic in a bird's eye view. Um, I would imagine. So the notes are not showing up 
within here. Um, I would imagine you could get that data through reports. So you could probably get that aggregated um, up. But I don't know of a way to get it to display on the clinic event. But let me, um, I'll, when we open up to everybody, I'm going to, I'll check to see if I can find like a list that would accomplish that. And then I'll let you know. Okay. And then um, Melissa is asking, is there a way to reserve a slot for someone that does not already have a record in legal server without going through the entire intake? Yeah, that's going to be um, similar to this re reserved one, or even right here, if I press add, uh, add client, um, you can make a, like an introductory, like first form on an intake process that isn't really collecting any data, except for maybe like the name, if you have it, if that's like, you talk to someone, you know that they're going to be coming in, but you don't, you're not actually collecting all their information until the clinic event. Um, you could create some means to generate an initial record, like an incomplete intake without requiring you to do the full intake and then still be able to schedule it. I also think you can get in the actions menu once you've passed through, once you've created the intake. So you have to press save on that first step. Um, I think you can access the schedule to clinic event from there see it if, if um, and then um the last one specifically on clinic modules of course they can continue in the chat as well and we'll work on you know try to answer them there as well um emily's asking my organization's clinic module intake mode is on begin applicant intake um for most of our clinics we're scheduling cases that come in through hotline for a clinic um and she goes on to ask but I can't find a way to assign existing cases to a, slime, to a time slot. I can only begin a new intake for that slot. It sounds like I need to ask IT to enable the assign clinic event function so I can assign existing cases to a clinic. Yeah, I think if it's not if it's not appearing in your actions menu for your case profile, or like when you're on the existing case that you're trying to schedule, then it sounds like you would want to ask to get that one enabled. And I'm flipping... Uh, right now to our actions menu for cases. So I can just show you what that um, that one looks like. And thanks Eve really for point. jumping in and helping with that answer as well. Yeah, um, so for us, we've added it into our actions tab folks might have it in a different place in your actions menu and you might call it something different. Um, we just have it reflecting the default name, which is scheduled clinic event. But yeah, they'll just need to add it in here um, to the actions menu and then you'd be able to do that assignment for existing cases. Awesome. All right, so, so now I the forum is open for you here in the audience to let us know what you want to discuss. Um, I have this one is quick not question. If Go that's ahead. okay. Um, so we use, this is Ariana. Um, I just wanted to follow up on that on that question I had. So we use, um, I, I, we host a lot of clinics at Legal Aid and um, we end up using like a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet to kind of keep track of clinic clients and like the status and updates of the case so that we can kind of see from like a bird's eye view of like where we are with that specific clinic. And so I was wondering if there if there is a possibility of putting like a like a small note section where you can see all the clients that are assigned to a clinic where you can say, okay, this person's ready for the case to be closed, or um, this person's ready to have their pleading filed, or something like that. Is that I don't know if my if my the way I wrote the question before it made sense, but no, 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 it definitely did, and I. I did just have a second to look at the list view columns. Anybody I feel like on this who does admin work is probably familiar with the, is is this column part of the list view, yes or no? So um, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen and Aaron, I think we have a promising answer for that question. <laughs> um, I We had not enabled the problem notes column on the appointments list view, so I'm doing that now. Um, that's might be general notes, we'll see. Um, and then when I go back to that clinic event, uh, track it down. Um, the notes show up, so you would still be able to go into that individual record. Um, and if I want to type, here are some notes. Uh, we press save, and 
it's linking me back to the case. Um, but we'll go back into that clinic event. And I see those notes reflected in here. So that would give you, I think, if I'm understanding your question correctly, definitely let me know if I'm wrong here, but I, that would give you like the, the narrative description that I think you're looking for for specific clients within that particular clinic event. Yes, that, thank you. I and this is to, oh sorry. <laughs> I was, gonna, I I was just gonna say about clinics. if anybody wants to chime in and unmute and say like what their experience has been if you're using it or if you are considering using it and haven't started um what you know what questions you're working through to decide whether to implement it I think yeah we're really excited to hear from from you all and definitely want to facilitate kind of cross learning um amongst everybody on the call so feel free to put anything in chat or to unmute. I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but um, I know there's so a lot Andrew of knowledge has, across has, this. Andrew popped in and he said they're looking into using part of the online intake module that allows clients to schedule themselves into the clinic appointments. Have you used that feature yet at all? Yeah, that's a great. And if you're uh, using it at your org, please put it in the chat. Yeah, I was gonna say, maybe before I answer, is anybody on this call using it and wants to talk about it? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so there's uh, it's an awesome tool. It allows you to publish time slots. Um, so you go in and you specify, you do have to indicate for each time slot whether it should be made available as part of your online intake. Um, there are some very specific mechanics. You want to just be careful when you're setting it up. I think it has to, the block to schedule has to go after the online intake is transferred, like the online intake transfer block. Um, and then it uh, it allows folks to make a selection from the available time slots and and indicate what they would like to which time they would like to appear um and then that record will show up um like as a reserved time um when you access it from like your main site so you'd be able to tell from the clinic event that somebody has grabbed that uh has reserved that window So that was that little yes, no for each one of those slots that, cause I didn't see like a description for those labels. That's what it means is, yeah. is this, okay. Yeah. That's like, um, if we, I think we've got them here. <laughs> so if you go in to edit the time slots, um, from after you've like created the clinic event, you'll see the yeah. labels. Yeah. Um, and then you would just go in and mark like yes or no. So it allows you to like control kind of the flow of how many time slots are appearing at any particular time on that list. Um, and then I do believe that you have to um, make sure that the problem codes line up. So um, it, it it's filtered like it, if the applicant picks a problem code, they're only going to show clinic event time slots that have that particular problem code. Um, the workaround, if it's open for like everybody, right, if it's not problem code specific, is just to make sure you select every problem code when you're setting up the clinic and the clinic event. But um, that's like the filter for that. Awesome. Thank you so much. I actually just thought of another question that I have and yeah. it relates to different types of uh, appointments. Uh, the two big ones are virtual versus in-person and English mm -hmm. versus Spanish. Yeah. Um, Would you I have to just create separate events for those? I think that Mm. Is that question specific for like externally facing? Like you would want no, not necessarily, saying, or just in general? Okay, just in yeah. general, how do you like record that? Because right, there's obviously different requirements for those types of appointments. So yeah, like would I that just be like custom field? Things. Yeah, you could either make a custom field. That would be like that's my first thought. Um, okay. to have that as like a yeah, either on the clinic or if like e if the clinic event varied, like you could also have it at that level. Um. I guess you could probably have it reflected in the title. Like you could make one clinic be like the virtual and one be the in-person if it wasn't necessarily like the, I guess data that you would need to easily like filter on in a report or something. Like it might be easier if you have a custom field, if you were trying to like run the data about how many, you know, virtual events you had. But right. if it's more like for like a descriptor, like an indicator for people accessing this, that this is the virtual one, then maybe like name would, would be sufficient. 
Um, I would also think same thing for like language, right? You could do it through a, a field or you could put it as like the, the event name. So you can customize those fields on the actual appointments? Yeah. Um, or not the on the event. appointment, on the event, so, yeah. So it would be the event, yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to create a separate event for... Yeah. Like if you were running both English, Spanish, virtual and online, you'd have four events probably. Yeah. 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 Cool. Thank you so much. This is your chance to get your questions answered, discuss how other organizations, if you are doing something really interesting and unique and you think others would benefit from it, we're happy to have you share. So jump in. Hi. Hi. Yes, I heard of a glitch some organizations were having. I was just wondering if you have a workaround for it. Um, when a, when you have two paralegals or staff members who are scheduling clinic spots at the same time, I heard that some organizations had a problem where the same clinic spot was selected at the same time by two different people. And the program, instead of like telling them there was an error, just chooses one or the other. Obviously it's only a problem if you have a lot of people scheduling them at the same time, but have you heard of that happening or do you have any workarounds? Oh, you're muted, Caitlin. Me to myself. Thank you. <laughs> um, I've heard of that. I've definitely I've heard of that happening. Um, I uh know it's something on legal servers radar, like that they've been alerted. So um, yeah, I, I think they're definitely uh if it's not already resolved, then it's it's on their radar to to address. So <laughs> hopefully it won't be an issue moving forward. And I will say that, that when I've heard of it happening, it has been few and far between. Um, it's definitely in like the high usage when you're everybody's like. Uh, a lot of cases are getting scheduled at the same time. It ups the chances that that happens, but definitely a, a thing that, that legal centers are aware of. Thank you. Yes, the meeting recordings will be on our YouTube channel. We are considering turning the event page into a place where the recordings will be. Um, so this one we have not decided if we'll post, but right, I think I think there's no reason to not post since we're going to provide some time at the end for private or questions that don't want to be recorded. So yes, I'll say that we'll post this on our YouTube site, and then I usually do like a monthly roundup of all of the webinars and send out the links to the videos on that as well. Well, I'll, I'll chime back in here um, if if there's no other questions, but um, I just want to share. Yeah, so we're building this out and we're going to do uh, potentially two different uh, like kind of additional things on it, hopefully, because we're currently using a platform called Acuity for scheduling, um, which is basically like a it's, it's basically built for like dentist office type things where you have like a certain amount of dentists and it's it's pretty pretty simple, but it does two things. One is it does payment processing. So we collect a $30 payment for every uh, case and um, legal server doesn't provide that. So we're gonna be hopefully building an API with Stripe, which is our payment processor. So if there's anyone else out there, I know that's pretty rare, but that collects a fee um, or any kind of money, um, would love to talk to folks about that. And then also, yeah, video conferencing. We still are doing a lot of virtual appointments. Um, and there uh, is no integration for like Zoom, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, and that's another thing that Acuity, you know, Acuity integrates with both Stripe and Zoom very easily. Um, so that once that appointment is scheduled, it just creates that Zoom link, sends it out to them um, so that you don't have to manually do that. So we're going to try to build um, probably an API uh, for the for the Zoom API uh, as well. So if anybody out there is running the clinics module with payment processing or video conferencing integration, I would love to to chat more about those two things. <laughs> Super cool, Andrew. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> And I do want to mention that we 
Um, you know, we're not here to answer all the, you know, little mini technical questions, but Caitlin does know a whole lot about legal servers, so she may have the answer. But then we also, you know, it may be something you'll have to reach out to legal server. And if there's anyone from legal server here in the audience, you're welcome to jump in and answer as well. And I see Eve is un unmuted. Of course, I have questions. Hi, Caitlin. Um, <laughs> is there a way to add a different type of process to the actions drop down instead of intake? Like, could we add like an add pro bono time process? Because we use clinics for our pro bono time, but it's only, I'm wondering if we can adjust what that link, that actions link does in the, in the actual clinic. So when you're in like the clinic event, when you go up to actions, yeah, yeah, it is, um, it is dynamic. Uh, and I should have said at the beginning, if I'm looking this way, it's where my other monitor is. Um, let me see to the extent, I don't know if you can pull in a time to date. Um, let me actually start for the admins on the call. And for those who are not, I hope this is not overwhelming. <laughs> um, but if we go to admin and then process these forms and profiles, right? That's where like 99% of your configurations live. Um, up at the top, it defaults to the case matter module, um, but to get to the clinics and the clinic event section, we're gonna have to toggle this over. So there's one for clinics and there's another for clinic event. And here I'm gonna, Eve, I'm gonna go to the clinic event to see if we can, if you're adding like time, I would imagine to that particular event. Um, this is where you can customize the forms that relate, that you see in the actions menu for clinic events. And then if we click over to profile, that's the dynamic clinic event profile. So if I wanted to make, if I wanted to put emergency contact up at the top, like I can drag and drop that over and then like shuffle, shuffle things around. Um, a little bit further down in the side action elements, that's where we see the actions menu for this. So you can certainly add new processes and you can rename what it is in the actions menu. I am not sure, I, I don't know that it's gonna time a link to the time slip process but you could potentially link to it it won't yeah they're oh <laughs> ron you got the <laughs> expert here uh yeah <laughs> so some customization but not to time specifically <laughs> thank you ron <laughs> Halfway there, Eve, but not, yeah, not for the specific use that you're looking for. It was for, worth so. a shot. Thank you. Yeah. I know there are questions out there from all the chatter that we had in the listserv so <laughs> hopefully that you're willing to either put it in chat or even come on camera or off camera and unmute um looks like samantha has unmuted did you have a question well yeah a little bit um so thank you this was really helpful um so i'm in florida and the clinic module has been um a bit like el dorado like everybody's heard of it but nobody's actually seen it used it seems like and um, so we do our clinics. So part of it, I guess I'm curious if you maybe can talk about the actual clinic, how you're using it. So we have two different types of, three different types of clinics that we do um, that are all a little different and they're they're scheduled differently. So I'm trying to figure out if going to the clinic module makes sense in any way. So I just, I'm kind of, if I can describe what we do and you can tell me your thoughts, I would appreciate it. Um, so we have a telephonic housing clinic. Um, People are assigned to that clinic by our intake after an initial interview. Um, and what we've been doing is setting up client appointment slots for when we have pro bono attorneys available and then just assigning the pro bono attorney to the client appointment slot. The intake person then assigns the client to that slot and, um, and then we email the attorney. Um, the one complaint I have about that is if I start off with one attorney available and then somebody else volunteers, I have to recreate the slot as opposed to going into the existing slot and adding something new. I have to go in and fill in like it's telephonic. It's this, you like you have to do the entire event over again. 
So I don't know if the clinic module would address that. Like if I could go into the clinic module and it looks like I could just like add a new appointment as opposed to creating an entire new clinic, which is functionally what I have to do in the calendar. Um, the other type of clinic we have is um, pro se divorce, which is in our office. I typically have, and I do the same thing. I do a client appointment slots. I make five available slots through our calendar. And then um, they get assigned once we do the intake and, and assess, you know, whether or not they're eligible for their services and whether or not clinic is appropriate. Um, and then the other kind is we like outreach clinics, um, ask a lawyer clinics. And we don't do any type of pre-application for those though. So we just show up and whoever comes, comes. So I don't, I, I'm not sure that the clinic module actually helps me with any of those three, but I would love your take on it if that's possible. I think for the first one in particular, it might be the most helpful just because you have so much flexibility to like add and edit time slots. So you would be able to come in and not, you wouldn't have to, I'll actually screen share just so we can kind of look at it in real time. Um, if this was, if this was your clinic, right? If this was the, or the time slots that you made available, um, or that, sorry, that you had, it sounds like pro bono volunteers available to be scheduled, to schedule clients into, and then someone's availability changed or opened up and you could have more, you wouldn't need to come in and create a new clinic event. You would be able to come in to, to the existing clinic event for that particular day. Um, and then go and edit the clinic event time slots. So you can adjust time ranges. You can scroll down and manually add new rows. And we didn't, I didn't talk about this, but I was doing that overview, but that like lets you really um, continue to modify this as needed. So that, that might be a, yeah, that is exactly, less data entry. Yeah. For the, that's exactly the problem we have is, you know, like we might have one attorney who, who can take two appointments and then I'll have like three more attorneys. So I have to go in and create, recreate it, you know, and that's, it's just cumbersome. So this, I think would help that first one. Thank you for clarifying that addition part. I really appreciate that. Yeah. You can also, um, the fact that you can make reoccurring clinic events is really helpful too. Um, so if you like, if this was happening on a certain interval, right, you can, you wouldn't have to make new clinic events even each time you could set that, you know, for the next month, you're confident that they're going to be happening on a weekly basis, like until. Yeah, we do, we do them pretty much every week, unless I either don't have volunteers or it's a holiday that's, kind of, or there's a hurricane. Like those are the three things. <laughs> Hopefully not that one. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so that might help also with the data entry, just the fact that there is this like built in duplication process, in addition to being able to modify the time slots in real time. Um, unless, uh, I'd be hesitant to make a call on those other two without having like a little bit more context for <laughs> what your, um, like workflows are. I do think, right. Like outreaches is also an incredibly helpful module. You can associate cases to outreach events. So if all you really want to track is that an event happened and ultimately know that certain cases came out of that, then like, especially for the, the third one that you were, that, that kind of outreach clinic, I, that outreach might be like in and of itself a good um like sufficient data tracking practice um I know some so we're gonna ready to start a series of ask a lawyer clinics um and when I was talking to our partner they were like oh we'll have them call and do appointments and we'll schedule and all. I was like no 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 we just do everything on site like it's not pre all of that so I think it sounds like where this is really helpful is if we do kind of that pre-screening and pre-scheduling whereas yeah. ours are you know throw up a shingle for a day and everybody who walks in gets to talk to an attorney yeah yeah I think um I agree with what you're saying like I, that I think that this is particularly helpful for scheduling like in advance I do think if you had like a walk-in clinic it could still one of the the benefits of this is that you could kind of track um the utilization like you could it might help you monitor trends like let's say you were doing this at clinic for every day in the week and it was all walk-ins you might you might be able to more easily track like okay what times are people not showing up for like okay we had this this whole week and nobody ever came to the 9 a.m one so that might help inform that we should probably shift this clinic later in the future like you might be able to because of that like status like of a no-show or a walk-in or, or sorry or of like that no one ever ultimately took that time slot um so that could that could be 
helpful information, but it just depends on, you know, the use case and what your organization needs in particular. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. This is your chance. If you have a question, jump in. And Andrew. Yes, I um, was running through the create event process kind of in tandem with you, and it skipped that screen where it asked you for the like number of roles or something like that. It just went straight to number of appointments and the number of slots per appointment. Do I yes. need to like turn something on for? And I even noticed like the name of the, when you were just sharing right now, like it showed the attorney, like under like attorney and then like a drop down kind of like. Uh, oh yeah. For the number of um, folks, I am going to say upfront that one piece I'm not as familiar with. Okay. So I don't know if anybody on the call is, <laughs> I don't want to, I want to be upfront about what I'm not going to cover. So that, that part, I'm not a hundred percent sure on, but if anybody else has experience with that, um, <laughs> Uh, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> or Ron, not to put you on the spot. <laughs> Anybody uh, <laughs> has been working with that volunteer? I can go back to the the page that I was on, but tracking um, the number and the types of volunteers that you need for particular uh, clinic events. So I, I guess probably related to pro bono volunteers, but not necessarily the same thing. Right, because it could be like interpreters. We, yeah, we use yeah. like kind of like a social worker type role. I've seen notary as well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be super helpful to have that. Um, but at the end of the day, that lives on the appointment, not the event again. Right. Yeah. You could, you could define it for each appointment. Yeah. Let me, um, you can also do, you can make it for the particular clinic. So I'll, oh. um, yeah, let me enable some things. Um, yeah, so I created it. Um, so I'm hopping over to the, uh, or actually we can do this from scratch. Uh, so the bankruptcy clinic, I enabled this volunteer positions list view that you can edit. Um, and that was what we uh. were seeing in that create step. And that's where you can designate, you know, you need this number of attorneys and you need this number of translators and press continue and then it's stored within here um and so then, i don't even see volunteer positions yeah yeah that is it, it is it's a volunteer position is the block but oh, i it's a block <laughs> okay yeah. got it cool um and then you can, from the clinic, like take that into the clinic event and say, this is the needs that you have for that particular one. But um, I'm sure there's more to it than what I'm saying here. So <laughs> No, that's that's very <laughs> helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Our time's almost up. I, if you have a question, please jump in. And then I'm going to reserve about... I haven't gotten any notification that people have messages they don't want to have recorded. So if you do have something, please send me a message in chat privately so I know, um, but this is still your opportunity. I'm still waiting for Caitlin to answer my question. <laughs> Ron, you're setting well, so, me up. That's a, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you popped on, Ron, um, do you have anything that you would like to say since you're here? Nothing specifically. I just wanted to listen in. Um, I always, anytime I get a chance to see Caitlin present on something, I always like to do it. So um, I always learn something. Like I didn't even know there was a volunteer positions block that you could put on your clinic events so made a note of that <laughs> both learning and then <laughs> close to real time <laughs> so, uh, i will note that i know the notification side of it that a couple of people talked about we know that that's something that you know at some point we would really like to integrate better 
So like you fill a slot and, you know, it shoots off a text or an email or whatever to the person that you, you know, the client <clears throat> or applicant that you put into the slot. And if it's associated, if a user is associated with that slot, you know, an email to the user. So that's, it's on a roadmap, but I can't tell you like, you know, which roadmap it's on. Would the workflows just, module allow you to do that though? Because doesn't that let you like automate? Uh, potentially it could. I don't know if workflows, I mean, workflows at least initially are focused on matters, you know, cases and matters, uh -oh. that module. Um, I don't know if it currently can see into the clinic module itself. Um, but of course, you know, once you have somebody scheduled into a slot, they've got a matter. So, yeah, I mean, there's potential there. There is potential there. But You're I also like the, the, the thing that uh, you mentioned, Andrew, about, you know, automatically creating a Zoom link or, you know, some other kind of link, sending that to the people. That sounds really cool. So, Angel, I saw you pop on camera. Did you have a question? Yeah, a quick question about um, how the separate clinic. So let's say you have 10 different clinics at the library or something. How do they show up on a report? So because we, we basically use put everything on outreach and the way it shows up is it, you know, just pops up as separate outreach. So I'm kind of curious how it pops up on the clinic side for reporting purposes. That's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up because yeah, we didn't we didn't even touch on reports. Um, you have flexibility. You can uh, access the tables for just the individual clinics, or you could also just have a report that's like all your clinic events. But if you're doing like the clinic events, it's pulling from the clinic name, right? The clinic event is just representing that particular clinic on a given day. But all of the data that we like talked about today is is accessible through reporting. Yeah. So when you're doing reporting for, let's say, you have some let's say for focus, some under outreach and then some under clinic, uh. would you like, how do you merge the data so that you can easily f do the report? Those might be two different reports because it's like two different segments, like two different modules of data. So that's, yeah, that's a fair point. If you were tracking some of the activities in, in outreaches and some in clinics, you'd have to kind of, I think you would have to have two different reports. I don't think that you can connect between the two. Uh, okay. You would definitely no. be running two reports. Okay, thanks. So. <laughs> and unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time. I really appreciate you all being here. Caitlin, thank you so much for sharing with us. That was really interesting. I don't get to see into case management systems as far as cases so much anymore. So that was fun for me to see how that works. And I just want to let everyone here know that we do have something similar to this coming up in October, October 12th. We're going to do an office hours on phone systems. We're going to try something new where the first hour is going to be short, quick demos of um, about five different companies. They're going to have 10 minutes to talk. And then the second hour will be where we do an open forum where um, we have invited invited the um, <laughs> providers to leave the room and so that we can have an open on and on conversation to see what other organizations are doing, what they're using, what problems they may be having. Um, but it's going to be a constructive discussion and not something that we're tearing down a company, certainly. So please watch out for that. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be posting this to our YouTube channel. And if there's anything else that you would like to see in the future, please let us know. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.